So I'll just take um, a little bit of time and uh, explain a little bit about our Dairy Digestive Research and Development Program. Um, so as you know, it's uh, evident in the name, the, the incentives here are for developing an anaerobic digester or a biogas plant on the dairy. Um, and you know, that captures that methane that's coming out from the manure lagoons. So once again, like in California, one of the unique things that we do have are that a lot of our dairies are flush dairies. Um, so, you know, the flush water from the uh, barns or from the lanes where the cows are standing containing a lot of manure, it kind of goes and is usually collected in a large lagoon. And as more and more water collects there, it creates anaerobic conditions, and that's really where there is a hot spot for that methane generation. Um, so that, you know, that might not be the situation in, um, you know, other types of operations where they don't do flush and don't have those styles of lagoons. Uh, but those lagoons are very common in California. And, you know, they have developed over time because over time the type of um, environmental regulations that have developed in California kind of pushed the industry towards lagoons. But as we caught up on the knowledge of climate change, um, now there's the opportunity to think about how to address those lagoons as well. So in this program, essentially, you know, capping uh, a lagoon is the easiest way. It's called a covered lagoon digester. Uh, but folks can also set up tank digesters. We're not limited by technology that way. Um, and, you know, milk producers as well as uh, developers who can make anaerobic digesters or biogas plants are eligible for this program. And what we've really seen um, in majority of our projects is that producers have, you know, made partnership companies or LLCs with the developers and they kind of apply together as an entity or a company. And they will usually have an agreement where, you know, the producer will commit to uh, providing the manure, whereas the developer might commit to making the uh, system and also the operation and maintenance because, you know, they require um, a lot of engineering expertise that, um, it, it's been beneficial to see the developers having a skin in the game by being partners on the project um, and being you know, partners on the profit because that, that kind of has, uh, has been getting them to commit to sticking around and helping with the operation and maintenance and being attentive to that aspect. Um, so that's, that's been kind of successful that we've seen here with our projects. Um, another thing that we've seen is that we have um, – uh, now slowly been progressing. You know, when the program first started in 2014, we were seeing a lot of individual uh, dairy digesters. Um, and now we are seeing more and more of cluster projects. So these are kind of, um, you know, what is also called a hub and spoke model, where many dairies um, that are located close to each other, which actually is, again, very common in California, especially in the Central Valley, um, those closely located dairies will kind of um, get together each dairy will have a biogas plant or digester on their uh, operation, but then they will also have a centralized facility where that, all the biogas that's being produced is piped and sent to the central facility for cleanup, conditioning, and you know, upgrading it to the quality of, um, of fossil fuel natural gas so that it can then be injected into existing gas pipelines on the gas grid. So those cluster projects have really been expanding um, now that we are kind of in year four of our program at this point. Um, and as I mentioned, the biogas can have many different eligible uses. Uh, the ones that we have funded through the program have been either generating electricity and that that electricity has to be uh, connected with the grid to put back on the grid, um, or like I was explaining with the pipeline, so injection of the biogas into existing pipelines. And in some cases, we've also seen that people have put in uh, transportation fueling stations where, you know, their milk trucks could potentially be fueled by the dairy biogas um, instead of natural gas. Um, and then we also have one example where that's a cluster project where there are many dairies um, surrounding a larger central facility that makes bioethanol. And so the energy needs for the bioethanol production are being met by the dairy biogas. Uh, from the contributing dairies. Uh, so a lot of different end uses that we're seeing. Uh, what we've also been hearing about and hope to see in the future are electrical fuel charging stations that are run by dairy uh, biogas electricity. Um, we've also seen folks um, who are looking into production of other higher, um, uh, higher capacity or better, more efficient fuels, such as hydrogen fuels, using dairy biogas as a feedstock for that. Um, we haven't yet funded projects in that 
that area yet, but you know, when we go to conferences, we're, we're definitely hearing that you know, those are the things that developers and companies are now starting to look into. Um, so really the opportunity for their producers to participate in the whole energy market and energy ecosystem has grown with the program. And this program provides up to a $3 million grant, and that is a minimum of 50% of the total project cost. Um, so, you know, the applicant has to provide at least 50% match here. Um, we also have some requirements for water quality and air quality. Um, I won't get into re re really deep details here, but as many of you probably already know, you know, California does have um, strict environmental regulations on agriculture. Um, so all, you know, farms have to meet water quality and air quality protection criteria in general. And then through this program, we have also enforced some of those re existing strict regulatory standards as part of our program as well. So, you know, anyone who gets funded through our program has to make sure they comply with all of those regs and, and you know, we keep a copy of their permits on file to, to confirm that that's the case. Um, in this next slide here, I just have a map of California. It kind of shows where uh, all of our funded projects are. Uh, so currently, as you'll see, they're in that Central Valley area. In 2015, we started by funding six projects. In 2017, we were able to fund 16 projects because we'd received more funds. The first year, we had about 11.1 million to, uh, or 12 million to distribute. Um, in 2017, we had received a 50 million that also included that alternative manure management program. And in 2018, we had 99 million, um, and with that, we funded 42 digester projects, and there's also more of those alternative projects. I'll be talking about those projects in a little bit as well. And then this year, we had, or you know, for the fiscal year 1819, we had another 99 million. We have not yet funded those projects, but we received. 66 applications under that, which are currently being reviewed. And then for next year, we have been uh, provided an allocation of 34 million, again, for the dairy methane projects. So these projects, we also um, you know, track how much greenhouse gases they are reducing over the course of a 10-year expected life. And currently, that number is at 12.8 million metric tons of CO2 equivalents. So that's methane and how it equates to CO2. Uh, I know that this number may or may not mean um, very much, just written here on its own, um, but this is actually one of the highest greenhouse gas reductions um, that all of our cap and trade, amongst all of our cap and trade funded programs that we're achieving. So this program has um, really just been quite successful at that. So in this next slide, I just have pictures. One of the projects but by one of the developers that we funded called California Bioenergy. Um, as you can see in the right bottom figure, that's really that big, large, covered lagoon there. Um, the other pond on the side is what is called a secondary lagoon. So after the manure has been uh, captured for all the methane under that cover, the leftover water is stored here temporarily in this lagoon before it moves on to be used um, uh, to either fertilize the silage crops or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, this picture again here, the bottom left one, you know, we are seeing at the back of uh, Secretary Karen Ross. She's the Secretary of California Department of Food and Ag, along with the dairy producer where this project is located. And this is a more close-up view of that large, giant, um, very thick plastic, uh, rubberized plastic cover that goes on top of that lagoon. And that, you know, so as the gas collects under it, it kind of expands and becomes bigger, and then the gas then, you know, it goes away. And so this part of the project is really where the um, the uh, conditioning upgrade, that type of um, activities take place. I think in this case, this was an electric project, so there's an electric genset inside the um, inside the that room. And this one is another like example. This is another developer that we have funded in the past. They're called Moss Energy Works. Um, if some of you are in Washington, you may have heard of them because I, I I understand they have presence all over the uh, the Pacific Coast, in Oregon, Washington, and California as well. So this here is the map of that bioethanol project that I was telling you about. Um, so we funded um, uh, so several projects within this, this cluster in 2017. Um, so I'm kind of, um, I, I will, so this over here, this little tiny uh, slice, that's the bioethanol plant. And then all of these dairies are kind of feeding gas through this network of pipelines to the biogas plant. 
And since 2017, there are many other dairies that have been added to this cluster, including in what you would imagine this side of the bio, uh, bioethanol plant as well. And you know, the bioethanol plant has a certain level of need for the gas, and then so what they have also done over time is they have developed a pipeline injection facility. So all of the extra gas um, that they don't use for bioethanol is going into um, our pipelines. Um, that's kind of a very lucrative use as well, again, because in California we have something called a low carbon fuel standard credit. Um, so the producers of you know, fuels that are lower in their carbon intensity, they can get credits from the government. So that kind of adds to their revenue. So for the dairy producer, other than selling their milk, they are also you know, making their profits from the biogas um, with, along with the developer and, and whatever their model is. And then on top of it, um, a lot of the times, um, the companies or the entities uh, together, they also participate in those credits programs as well. So that was an overview of our uh, biodigesters. And like I said, uh, the more common types of biodigesters that we've seen are covered lagoons. Um, that said, the program does allow for tank style digesters as well, which to our knowledge are probably more common in the East Coast, but a little bit less common here in California. Um, but we have not yet seen projects kind of go that route yet. 